Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, welcome to Tuesday. So I put my picture on the screen today because there's something I'm, I want to explain to you for the lesson. It's better if I can actually show you so you hopefully you'll understand a little bit better. Um, I don't usually put my picture on the screen just because it covers up the screen. But I'd rather you see the screen and what I'm trying to show you than my face. But here it is. So today we're going to talk about something called um, linear transformations. Um, so let's just get right into it and get started. And we're going to do some practice on that as well. So I'm going to bring up this other um, file here. And I'm going to like, let me see if I can like minimize this without it completely going away. Because sometimes it just completely disappears. And maybe we can still see the screen a little bit here. Okay. So here we're going to talk about, um, hmm, I think my linear transformations. Where is my first slide? I'm on the wrong slide. There it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. Let me get set up here. Here we go. Okay. So linear transformations. So first of all, um, linear, hopefully you're remembering it's lines. So on your screen here, you see a picture of a line. What is transformation though? What does transformation mean? So think about just an everyday life in the world. When you hear the word transformation, what do you think? A lot of people use it when they're talking about the life cycle of um, butterflies and caterpillars. They'll say the, the, Caterpillar transformed into a butterfly. So something happened there. Something changed. So think of transformation as a change. So when we're talking about in math, we're talking about changes as well. And we talk about transformations. Now, I know in eighth grade, y'all didn't go a whole lot of in depth into geometry, but you were supposed to talk about transformations of shapes in eighth grade math. So if you didn't get to that, this might be a little bit newer to you than it should be most years, but that's okay. We're still going to talk ourselves through it. So a transformation, like we said, it just means that it's a change. Just a change has happened. So right here on this line, this is what we call um, right here, this black line that's graphed on the screen. This is what we call the parent function. So this is the original. This is no change has happened. This is like starting position. Um, so we're going to explore the changes and what happens to this function here. What happens when lines get changed? What does that look like? Okay. So this right here, what I just told you, this is a graph of the parent function. This is actually the graph of f of x equals x, or you could replace f of x and just say y equals x. Now, a lot of times we talk about y equals mx plus b. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. How does this relate to mx plus b? So what is m and what is b? So remember, m is your slope. So m is usually the number that's sitting in front of x and b is the value that's usually stuck on the end or it's just the number by itself. So what is the slope and y-intercept of that line right there, the parent, the one I'm telling you, the black line, that's the starting, f of x equals x or y equals x. Well, what's the number sitting in front of x right here? Do you see one written? No, so then we know it must be one. And is there a number tacked on the end? Mm -mm. So for the parent, your slope is always one and your y-intercept is zero. There's no b value tacked on the end and the number sitting in front of x for this equation is one. Okay, well, let's take a look now at this line. Look at the red one. What happened there? So there's a change has happened. It's not the same as the black one, right? What actually happened? Well, if you'll notice, the black one's going one direction and the red one flipped over the other way. So this is something, this is what we call a reflection. It was reflected. Uh oh, I don't remind me later, please. I don't want to install that right now. Um, this is what we call a reflection across the x axis, but we end up just calling it as reflection. It's the lines been reflected. There was a reflection that happened. So look at the red line really closely now, and let's ask the question what's the new slope? What happened to our line? Is it still a slope of positive one? The black one has a slope of positive one. I could rise up, run one, rise up, run one. Well, the red one, I'm still rising and running one, but something's happened. So remember, if you start on your line and you trace it and it's going up, that's a positive slope. But for the red one, what happens if I trace it from left to right? Oh, my mouse is going down. So my slope has changed now to negative. So anytime you have a negative slope on a line of any equation, we say that's a reflection. 
Notice it's still crossing the y-axis at zero. So the y-intercept didn't change for this one, just the slope. So the new equation, and let me move myself over here. The new equation, I think I'll put this one up here, it's going to be f of x equals negative x. So we just replace that with a negative slope. Okay, let's look at another one. There's your parent function again. So anytime you're looking at transformations, trying to identify the changes, and that's how they'll ask you what change, what transformations have occurred, what changes have happened to this line, you got to compare it to the parent. It's like if I said, hey, um, do you look more like your mom or your dad? Well, I can't just look at you. I couldn't just look at the change, the transformation. It's your kind of a transformation of your parents and decide who you look more like. I have to compare you to someone. So I need a picture or I need one of your parents standing there so I can say, oh yeah, I definitely see likenesses or I see differences. This is who you look more like. So think of it as the parent is who you're gonna compare to. So you've always gotta have a graph of the parent so you can compare it. Okay, so let me grab my mouse, where'd it go? So again, since this is the parent, the slope and the y-intercept is still one. Your slope's still one, your y-intercept's still zero. Our equation of the parent does not change. That's the original. Well, look, take a look at this line. What happened to that one? Now let's think about this. So here is a purple line. It definitely looks different. I can see it doesn't look reflected though, right? Not like the red one we had before, because here's the black line going up. If I trace the purple line, my mouse is still going up. So this one has a positive slope. However, something else has happened to it. It's not exactly the same as a black line anymore, is it? Mm -mm. There has been a change. And so what this looks like, we call this, we've had, um, a sh um, there has been a stretch that's happened to it. Not a shift, a stretch. We'll talk about shifts in a minute. Um, a stretch, some st sort of stretch has happened. And this is why I've got myself on the screen here because this is what I'm going to put myself more front and center here. So I want you to think about this. I think it's a little bigger so you can see. So I have in my hand here um, a rubber band. So I want you to look at my rubber band. So I want you to pretend like this is my parent function. Okay. Now I can stretch this rubber band. That's what I'm going to do. So I want you to look at my rubber band and I want you to think Ms. Robinson is going to stretch it. I'm going to stretch it up and down this way. What happened to my line? Here's the original. It kind of looks like our black line. Now I'm going to stretch it this way, up and down. It kind of looks more like the purple one, doesn't it? Let me move myself over a little bit so you can see the purple line a little bit better. Okay, so here's our black line. Here's your parent. I hope this is right on the screen. I may have this backwards for y'all, but it's okay. It's, the concept's the same. So here we go to the purple line. I stretched it vertically. I stretched it up and down vertically. I pulled this way. Notice the steepness of my line changed. So when you have a vertical stretch, well, let me see if I can make myself smaller without making myself disappear again. So when you have a steepness of your line changes and it gets more steep, the line got steeper here. So notice I would rather walk up the black line than the purple line because the purple line looks like it's way more steeper. We call that a vertical stretch, okay? So it's stretched, like you took the line and you stretched it, you stretched it up and down. Now, sometimes they also call this a horizontal compression. So this is like, think of it as if I had my, my line here and then someone, here's my black line, my original, someone pushed it, pushed it in this direction. It kind of would tilt it up as well and make it steeper. Kind of a hard concept to grasp. But I want you to really focus on the idea of stretching it. Which direction would you be stretching it to make it steeper? So if I have my original black line, if I pulled it up and down this way, that's a vertical stretch. That's going to make it steeper. So what actually happened to it? Well, there's a new slope now because it's steeper. So if we were to calculate the slope of the purple one, if I start here, because I'm still crossing at the origin, I rise up one, two, and I run one. So this slope is now two. So instead of having a slope of one, like we did on our parent function, oh, we have a bigger slope. So the bigger your slope, the steeper your line. Oh, okay, so that might be a pattern we need to think about. The bigger your slope, the steeper your line. So then our new equation is just f of x equals two x. So now my slope is no longer one. Notice this one's still a positive slope. Okay, well, let's look at a different kind. Here's our parent. What's the slope and y-intercept? 
it's still one y intercept of zero. Nothing changed there because it's the parent. It doesn't change. Oh, but look at this line. Now look at the pink line. So talking about steepness here, I can see the y intercept didn't change. It's still crossing at the origin. However, the steepness of this pink line is not near as steep as the black line. I want to walk up the pink line more than the black line. Yep. Because that's not going to take very much energy on my part because it's not near as steep. So we got to think about it this way now. Okay. So here's my black line. Let me put myself back in the center again so you guys can see me a little bit better. Just got to make it bigger. Okay. Here we go. So here's the black. Here's the original, the original line right here. So instead of me pulling it this way, which made it steeper, well, now what if I pull it? What if I pull it left and right? What if I pull it horizontally? If I stretch it horizontally, it naturally makes my line not as steep. Because here's my original, I'll let go. Now I'm going to pull it this way. Look how my line naturally just lays down. It's not as steep. So let me move myself out of the way again. Okay, so that's what happened here. So what changed for this one? Well, the line is less steep. We call this a horizontal stretch. So it's as if you took it and you stretched it left or right. Or you could call it a vertical compression. It's as if somebody took it this way and smushed it down, smushed it down from top to bottom. So what's the new slope of the pink line then? Well, let's see if we can calculate it. I'm at the origin. I can see it's crossing this point over here. So if I rise up one, I have to run one, two, three, four. Oh, so I rise up one, I run four. So one over four. Oh, so our new slope of our new line is one over four. That slope got smaller. So smaller slope, less steepness. Hopefully that makes logical sense to you. So your new equation is just one fourth in front of X instead of the one. So remember your slope sits beside X. So those are a couple of changes that can happen. So here's our graph again. Here's our parent function. Let's look at a different kind of change. What's the slope in the y-intercept of the black line? Well, it's the same it has been. That's our parent function. Our slope in our y-intercept is slope equals one, y-intercept still zero. Let's check out this line though. Oh, what happened to this one? Hmm. What changed with this blue line? So a change has definitely happened. It's not the same as the black one. So we're crossing here at the origin and our slope is one, one. Well, is the blue line crossing at the origin? It's not, is it? What's the slope of the new line? The blue one, you rise up one, run one. Rise one, 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 run one. Oh, so my slope is still one over one, which is just one. So my slope didn't change. However, the black line, the parent function is crossing at the origin. It always is. My blue line is now crossing at one, two, three, four. So this line, it was like you took the y-intercept and you shifted it up. You just took that whole line. Let me go this way. I don't know which way is straight on. I think I'm seeing myself backwards over here. But you took the whole line and you just shifted it up. So the line was shifted up four units. We count it from the origin. So don't we know the new y-intercept now? What's the new y-intercept? Oh, well, it's four. So that's going to change our equation because remember it's y equals mx plus b. My slope didn't change. It's still one. Oh, but I have to tack on that four on the end. Before I had plus zero, which I didn't even need to write. I don't need to write when it's crossing at zero, but now it's crossing at four. So I need to write that. So that's x plus four. Change the equation of our line. So a change happened. Okay, let's look at another change here. Here's our parent function. What's our slope and y-intercept again? It's the same. It's one is our slope, our y-intercept zero. This line doesn't change. It's the parent. But now look at the green line. Oh, okay. Let's check our slopes. Let's see. Does this one look any more or less steep than the than the black one? Well, our black's one. So let's rise up, run one. Rise up, run one. It looks like the slope of my green line is still one. So what did change? Look at the y-intercept. Can you see? The other line we had shifted up. So now here's my parent. So it looks to me like my line now has been shifted down. Now yeah, that's exactly what happened. The line was shifted down four units. So what's the new y-intercept? Oh, well this time because it shifted down, it's negative four. So we have our new equation. F of x equals x minus four. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close myself out here. 
So I don't think I need to illustrate anymore. What does it look like if we have multiple changes, multiple transformations that are happening? So check out this red line right here. Okay, this is kind of tricky because I am seeing that first of all, it's not crossing at the origin, it's crossing up here. Looks like it's crossing at one, two, three, four. Oh, and I noticed that the black line is a positive slope. Oh, but my red line is not a positive slope. So what all the transformations have occurred? Okay, well, let's see. It definitely looks reflected, right? It's going in a different direction than the black line. It has a negative slope. So it's reflected. What else happened? Oh, it is shifted up. Yes, and we were right. It's the black line's crossing at zero, zero, but the red line's crossing at one, two, three, four. Okay. And then it looks to me like our red line has a vertical stretch. It looks like someone pulled it from top to bottom because it is way steeper than the black line. So think you're going to walk up the red line. It's going to take a lot more steepness than walking up that black line. So that's a vertical stretch. The steeper it gets, think vertical, got to go up and down. It's going to be harder to go up and down. So because we said vertical stretch, more steepness means that you're going to have um, a bigger slope. So what is your new equation going to be? Oh, I don't think I wrote the new equation. I thought I did. I guess I didn't ever write the new equation on this one. Um, but we could figure it out, right? Because we could say, well, we could figure out our slope. We could figure out our y-intercept. And we know that slope's got to be negative. We've done things like that. We've been given lines and we have written the equations. But right now, what we really want to focus on is can we identify what transformations have occurred? So how are we going to practice that? Let's go to um, Canvas. And let's go and click on the modules page for today. It's taking a while for it to load. Okay, so when you get to your modules page, go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom, which mine is taking forever. Everything didn't load correctly. Um, and remember, if yours got really long like mine did, you can always go up and collapse these modules. I thought I had them collapsed. It must have reset them though. But you can always recollapse them, and that's going to make your module page like so much. So much um, easier to navigate. See how much shorter my module page just got there? That's great. So we want to do this thing called linear transformation practice. It says quiz. Don't freak out. It's not a quiz. It's just practice. That's just what Canvas calls it. So here's what you're going to do. It says, remember, compare it to the parent function. So you can use Desmos for this. Here's my new transformed equation. I need to figure out what changes happened. So I come over here to Desmos, and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to type in the parent function, f of x equals x, or you could type y equals x. Same thing. That's the parent. Notice, excuse me, this is what we were looking at a minute ago. It's going through the origin, and it has a slope of 1. Rise 1, run 1. Rise 1, run 1. Slope of 1 going through the origin. I'm going to change this to projector mode, so it makes the line a little darker. Now, here's something cool. If you want to, you can change the color of your line here. So click on your little gear wheel, and then you click on the color dot, and you can make it any color you want. Now, I like to make the parent function black. And then I like, and then you hit done. So that way, when I graph the my change, it's usually in a different color, and it kind of pops out at me. So our equation here that we're looking at is f of x equals 2x. Remember, graph the parent up here and don't touch it. You're going to leave it there for the whole assignment. Don't ever touch it. Leave it there. Then come down underneath and type the one you're supposed to be looking at. So there's our new one, the blue one. See, I can see the difference in the color. And if you want to change the color again, hit your gear wheel. Click on the dot and change it to whatever color you want. Okay, so here's my original parent is the black one, and my new one is red. So I'm trying to figure out what happened to the red one. Well, what are my options? I can choose, and it says choose all that apply. Does it stretched horizontally? Remember, that's also called a vertical compression. Or was it stretched vertically, which is also called a horizontal compression? 
So does it look like this red line got steeper or less steep? Yeah, to me, it looks like it got more steeper. Like I would rather walk up the black line than the red one. That red one looks like it's getting pretty steep. And remember, that's what we talked about because we said that when it gets more steep, um, that the slope gets bigger. And actually, we should even go over to our notes here. Let me hop on over here. Let me open up my journal. So you put the slides in yesterday for um, this unit four into your journal. And I wanna show you one of the slides I gave you and we should have linked it, linear transformations. I gave you a reference chart. This is what we just talked about in our slideshow. So you have this in your notes to reference it. So these are pictures of all the things that can happen. Okay, so the one we're looking at right now kind of looks like this one. And so this is what happens when your slope in front of X is bigger than one. It's what we call a vertical, remember it's called a vertical stretch. It means it's like someone stretched it from top to bottom. So then you can go to the next one. So here's another one. And remember, it says compare it to the parent. So come over here. And now you don't erase the parent. Leave the parent function. Type in the new one that they want you to compare it to to identify what changed happens. It was 1 half x. So it's green now. But now my parent is still saying this, staying the same color. So that's good. So look at the green line. Does it look more steep to walk up or less steep? Looks to me like it's kind of laying over a little bit, like it's less steep. So it almost looks like somebody grabbed it on this end, grabbed the line on this end, and pulled it left to right horizontally. So that would be a horizontal stretch. Okay, so then let me hop on over and look at number, number seven, I think, or eight maybe. There's quite a few of these, but they, they don't take long to work at all, okay? They're, they're pretty quick. So um, I'm going to jump over now and do question number seven. Well, f of x equals negative 2x, okay? So remember, leave your parent and come type in your new one, negative 2x. Okay, for this one, okay, let's zoom out if we need to here. I'm seeing I have my black line, and then I notice it's going through... Like I go up one, one, looks like it has a slope of one. That's our parent. But notice the green line, it's not really following the same path, is it, of the black line. And notice the black line is positive, but the green line is negative, right? And look, what's in front of X? It's a negative sign. So remember, anytime you see that negative, that's a reflection. It has been reflected. That's super important. Okay, so we know it's been reflected, but has the steepness changed? So they're also asking me, has it been stretched vertically or horizontally? Well, it looks to me like the green one is steeper. It's a lot steeper than the black line. It looks like it's climbing up towards the y-axis here. It's getting closer and closer to the y-axis. So it looks like someone took it from the bottom and the top and kind of pulled on a little bit and it got steeper. So remember, bottom to top, that's vertical direction. So it's been stretched vertically. So then when you come along, keep going down. Uh, let's go to like question 15 maybe. Well, here's another one, x plus 1 eighth. Okay, so remember, leave your parent and then type in your new one, f of x equals x plus 1 eighth. Okay, oh, I'm in my black one. Let me hit the home button here. There, oh, okay. So do you see how it doesn't look like there's two lines there? But now let's zoom in. Oh, okay, here we go. So now that we zoomed in, now I can really see it. So if it's a trick, if you think, oh, I didn't graph it, try zooming in or out. It's probably there. So what happened between the black one and the purple one? Does it look like, is has it been reflected first of all? Nope, because these are both positive slopes, right? So it's really asking me, has it been shifted up or down? So I'm looking here and I see here's this line. It looks to me like the purple line is the y-intercept is much higher. So when you're trying to figure out if it's been shifted up or down, compare the y-intercepts. Yeah, this y-intercept is just a little bit higher. It's a decimal, but definitely has been shifted up. The purple one's above the black one. 
Okay. Um, so maybe like one more. Let me hop on over to like maybe question 20. I'm going to do like 20. I'm going to do like number 20. Let's try that one. So I have negative 1 half x plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to come and pop these things in. Negative 1 half x and then plus 1. Okay, so let me hit the home button. Because, see, I don't see my graph again, so I always start by hitting the home button. Okay, there's my two pictures. Okay, so remember the black one's the original, so I want to compare the purple one to the black one. What happened to the purple one to make it change? Well, first of all, the black one has a positive slope, but the purple one does not. The purple one has a negative slope. So that means it has to have been a reflection, first of all. Let's see what else changed. Well, I also see that the black line is crossing at zero. But the purple line, where's the y-intercept for the purple line? Oh, it got shifted up. So notice the y-intercept changed. It was shifted up one. So the y-intercept was shifted up. So now we need to figure out, has there been a stretch? Has it been stretched horizontally or vertically? So think to yourself, which one is steeper? Walking up the black line, or if I'm gonna walk up the purple line. It's, it can be hard to tell sometimes, but I can see the black line's crossing here at this point, but the purple line doesn't, ever, doesn't quite reach there as fast, right? Purple line's down here when the black line's already crossed at this point, because they're, they're symmetrical. I mean, they're not symmetrical, but because it's been flipped over. And sometimes the easiest thing to do is if you take off that negative in front, then you can really tell. Because remember, the negative is what swaps it around the other way. So we already know it was reflected with that negative. If we take that off, then we can look at it and say, well, what really happened? Is the purple one more steep or less steep? It looks a lot less steep to me than the black line. So remember, that looks like it. someone took it on this side and this side, left and right and stretched it left or right. Well, that's in the horizontal direction. So that's a horizontal stretch. Okay, so do your best. See if you can practice these. Um, I've worked three or four of them with you. You can see how quick they are to work. Um, they don't take long. The key thing is leave, leave this one, the parent, in Desmos. Just change the second one. Type the one that you're looking at, the one that's been transformed. So you can identify those transformations. Um, I know this can be a little tricky, so if you're needing extra help, I can find some more videos for you to watch, or we can schedule um, a video conference and go over some of them together. So reach out if you're needing help.